God made a covenant with you because all the promises God made are for you. You are the world that he loves. You are the world, the world that God loves. And that will never, ever change. Even though the people lie about that, God does not change. God created you as a vessel for mercy and peace. God also created people for destruction. So what are you doing here? When is the time to move? God wants you to receive the Holy Ghost before he returns. He wants me to ask you a very important question. To is the seed yet in the barn? That's your prophecy. That's your word from God. If you spent this week of tabernacles with us, this prophecy tonight is the most important out of all of them. If you see what I just did, I took all of the messages that we had and I showed you how all of those messages tie into what we're talking about today. This is not from me. This message is from God. Everything we talked about this week leads up to a prophecy that you're going to get today. And I need your undivided attention and I need you to listen prayerfully. In Numbers 23, verse 19, it says, God is not a man that he could lie. Neither is God the son of man that he should repent. Has he said something and shall he not do it? Or has he declared something and shall not he make good on it? God is not like people. He tells no lies. He is not like humans. He doesn't change. When he says something, he does it. When he makes a promise, he keeps it. I know this generation wants to get God their own way. I know this generation has their own way of getting to God. They don't believe they need a, to be a part of a congregation. They don't think they need a pastor. The Bible says, how? How shall they hear without a preacher? Who wants to be governed? Who wants restrictions? God has a method for speaking to his people. It's probably not the method of me or you or you, but it's God's method. God uses the mouth of prophets to speak his word. The word is then echoed by other prophets and apostles. That's why you got to read the Bible precept upon precept. What did this prophet say? That mirrors what the another prophet says. That's identical to what the apostle said that matches what the parable Jesus gave. That's how you read the Bible. That's God's method of getting the word to you. Matthew 4 and 4 says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by food alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When did a word proceed out of the mouth of God? When the prophet said it and you read it. The words comprised in these 80 books Call the Bible aren't just words. This is the breath and the spirit of God Almighty. When you go to Luke 4 and 4, he says the same thing. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Did you catch that? He said it is written. Well, where is it written? This is the proper way to read the Bible. We got to go see where it's written. In Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, he says, God humbled you and suffered you to be hungry and fed you from bread from heaven. This is when we left Egypt. That you didn't even know about. Neither did your fathers ever know about this. He said, I gave bread from heaven that I never did. I never did this for anybody else but you. God did this that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone. That's what he says. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. This is how man is supposed to live. That's the proper way to be to read the Bible, by precepts. I just gave you three scriptures, three confirming witnesses. We got Matthew, we got Moses, we got Luke that says we must live by the word of God. The Bible does not contradict itself. It's not a book. Romans 15, 4 says, For whatever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That means for whatsoever things were written aforetime. What does aforetime mean? Old Testament were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures. Scriptures give comfort? Comfort comes from scriptures. So that we might have hope. The prophecies in scripture is what gives us hope. The prophecies in scripture is what we should hope for. It gives us the guide of what we should be hoping for. This is how God talks. And this is a message 
today directly from God. This is your message. I want to make sure you get it. Sit over here. The Lord himself speaks to the prophet Haggai. This is extremely important. I might have to say this multiple times. I want y'all to catch this. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yeah, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree has not brought, brought forth from, has not brought forth. From this day will I bless you. That's your bread for the day. Why is God talking about vines and fruit? What does it mean? All right, here's the precept for it. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. He that lives in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. God expects us to bring forth fruit. We should be a different person. We should be showing fruit every day. His first commandment to Adam was what? To be fruitful and flourish. I want you to catch these prophecies. They will all make sense at the end. He mentioned pomegranate. When a pomegranate is ripened, the pomegranate bursts open and numerous seeds pour out. Somebody counted them. They said it's 613 seeds and they say the seeds represent 613 um, commandments in the Bible. I don't know if that's true. But we know the pomegranate flourishes and it produces seeds of its own kind. Pomegranate doesn't produce an apple seed. One day Jesus saw a fig tree that should have had fruit. He cursed the fig tree and he went about his business. On their way back to that same city, they passed that same tree. And Peter said, wait a minute, I remember. Peter, Peter remembered it's Jesus, master, look at the fig tree that you cursed. Look at it. It's dried up. It's withered away. Read this with me. The Lord called your name. A green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he has started a fire on it. And the branches, you, are broken. God calls us an olive tree. It all makes sense in a minute. I want you to catch these prophecies. The vine is dried up and the fig tree is weak. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also. Even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. This means there's a place that no longer operates in its full potential because God's chosen people have been dispersed. Our joy is gone. This place is nothing compared to what God is going to do. For the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit and the ground shall give her increase. These are all prophecies. And the heavens shall give her due. He's not talking about agriculture. He's talking about us. And I will cause the remnant of his people to possess all these things. If we walk in my statues, God is telling me, if you tell you to do and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season. And the land shall yield her increase and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. For the world is divided into 12 parts, says the prophet Ezra. And the tenth parts of it are gone already, and half of the tenth part. And there remaineth that which is after the half of the tenth part. So God is telling you, is letting you know that everything has a time. Everything has a season. That's what feast days are for. They're called moedim. That means appointed times. There are times for everything. It's just like a movie um, a stage play. When this is your cue to go and do this. This is your time to start to do this. The world is set up. Everything you're going through is not an accident. God knows everything that we're dealing with. God knows every time he has to bless you. He knows the date and the time that you're going to get saved and surrender your life. He knows the, the time that he's going to have to protect you from being in an accident. God, everything is God's plan and he's in full control at all time. The time of this world is almost up. 10 parts, I'm sorry, 12 parts of our, is 10 parts are already gone. And half of the 10 part, I mean 10 and a half parts of the time from God created the earth so the time he's coming back was gone at the time Ezra wrote this. That lets us know how much time is left. Almost not. God has pre-planned everything, including our current situation. God has a date already set up that he's going to come back and end this current world. The Bible says now because of that, set your house in order and reprove your people. Straighten them out. And it says comfort such of them that be in trouble and now renounce corruption. Verse 14, let go from your mortal thoughts 
cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy on you, and hurry up and run from these times. For yet greater evils than those which you have already seen, you've already seen some very bad things happen. You've seen World War I, seen World War II, you've seen Great Depression, you've seen slavery, greater things are gonna happen. Verse 17, for look how much this world shall be weaker through age. So much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell in the world. Read this with me as I paraphrase. God has directed this question for you today. He's talking directly to you today. Is there any seeds left in your barn? With the seeds that you planted, has the vine produced any grapes for wine? What about the fig tree or the pomegranate seed that you planted? Do you have any fig tree or pomegranates yet? Do you have any oils that, because you planted some olives, some, it should be some olive uh, trees by now, right? No, it's not. I know it looks bad right now, but from this day, even though you don't have the grapes or the pomegranate yet, from this day, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you before you see it. God is prophesying directly to you and letting you know, I'm going to do you good. I know you live in a world with disease. I know you live in a world with sickness and stress and corruption. I know you think it's normal to set alarms, to force you out of your slumber, drown your stomach with coffee, rush out of the door, separate from your family. I know we think this is normal to speed down the street to punch a clock just to get enough money to eat. I know you have to get permission to take a day off, even if you're sick. I know we think this is normal because we've done it for so many years. I know you're burdened with life. Anxiety has become normal. Depression is medicated. I know the world you live in now has no hope. There's wars and rumors of wars. There's pestilence and tornadoes in various places. I know natural disasters are prevalent as the earth moans and groans waiting on its creator to return. But don't give up. Don't worry. Don't lose faith. Even though there's no seeds left in your barn, trust God. I know you're trying to make ends meet and try to figure out a plan. And although there's nothing on the vines yet, God is your vine. Your branches are withered, but you are going to be fruitful. God promised it. He doesn't lie. You, begin, you can begin to thank God right now. You can thank him right now for restoring us and delivering us and rescuing us. We can thank him for that now because it's going to happen. One day this will all be over. One day our king shall return. Psalms 138 says the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. God is concerned about you. Who wouldn't serve a God that's concerned about them? 9 and 12 says that they might possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen. What does that mean? What does possess mean? Which are called by my name, said the Lord that does this. In Tobit 13, 5, the Bible says, and he will scourge us for our iniquities. Yeah, we had to pay for it. And he will have mercy on us again. And he will gather us out of all nations among whom he had scattered us. This is going to happen. We can thank him for that right now. Micah 2.12 says, I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of you. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make a great noise by reason of the multitude of men. There's going to be so many of us coming back that God says it's going to be a great noise. These prophecies are in your Bible. Which one of them do you think God is going to break? He's coming back for you. That's guaranteed if you believe that you'll be praising God right now. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment. What does that mean? And her converts with righteousness. That means in the midst of God's judgment, the Bible says you will be saved. In the midst of the worst days on earth, I want to pre-warn you not to worry. Look up, your Redeemer is here. He's coming in the midst of all of this. This is the information that you need. I don't know what every other preacher is talking about, but I want you to be ready for what the Lord calls the time of harvest. I want you to expect this and know what to do. God said, let the wheat and the tare grow together until the harvest. We know what the day of harvest is. We just saw it. And in the time of harvest, God said, I will send the reapers. I'm going to tell the reapers, the special angels that he has called reapers, 
to go gather together first the tares, bind them up in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Are there seeds in my barn now? God is a God that doesn't change. He is our God and desires his people. He loves his people. He made rules that govern our behavior and he doesn't change from it. He is a chosen people and he doesn't change from it. He loves us so much, he's willing to die for us and he didn't change his mind, nor does he possess any regret. God creates and establishes future events from nothing with us in mind. When God has planned what he's gonna come back, when he's gonna come back, he has us in mind and he doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. He establishes prophecy to increase our faith. We get our faith from prophecy. We get our hope from prophecy. If God says a thing is going to happen, it's going to happen when he said it, just like he said it with the people he said it to. We see God speaking through prophets that he raised up. Oh yeah, our belief in our God is unique. We can look at a prophetic utterance from God. We can look at something that he said and then we can pattern our life, our entire life, based on it. We base our lives and we pattern our lives based on the fact that God is coming back. That's what we do. God said he will come back. Well, first time God said he's going to come and die for us. When God said that, he prophesied that he's going to come and die for us. Then we see a baby lying on a straw in the manger, in a barn, in a barn. The prophecy says, call that baby the mighty God. That same baby was murdered for you. And the angels prophesied, this same Jesus is coming back. God is coming back. Acts 1 and 11, which also said, ye men of Galilee. The angels saw some men standing there watching Jesus go into heaven. He said, why y'all standing here looking up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner. The same way you've seen him go up, that's how he's going to come back. That's a prophecy. He's coming back for you. Why waste time with any religion that doesn't have any proven prophecy? Think about all the religions in the world. They don't have any prophecies. Why waste time with that? You want me to just believe you because you said it? When the Babylonians ruled the entire world, I can show you in the Bible where that was prophesied. I can show you hundreds of years before when the Assyrians were prophesied to rule the world. I can show you in the Bible before it happened when the Greeks and the Romans were prophesied to be in power just as precise as I can show you in the prophecy that says Jesus' legs will never be broken. I'll show you right now. It says right here in Psalm 34, 20. It says he keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. It proclaims the prophecies written in scriptures, sometimes thousands of years before. We have proof that our history, God sets up prophecies and our history proves that it happened exactly the way he said it. No other book, no other religion, no other faith offers proven prophecies. They came to break his legs when he was on the cross. They broke everybody else's legs. Every time somebody was on the cross, they broke their legs. Every time they wanted to break somebody's legs, they just broke it. But they couldn't break Jesus' legs. Why? Because it's written. That's the power of prophecy in our Bible. This is how awesome God is. Hey, Noah, it's going to rain. Hey, Abraham, I'm going to bless your seed. Hey, Israelites, you're going to go into slavery. Joshua, I'm going to give you this promised land. But there's giants. What about the prophecy? I just told you I'm going to give you the land. Who cares about giants or anything else? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You need to hear this so you can be strong in your faith. When tumult comes, when calamity comes, when the war comes, I don't want you to give up hope. I don't want you to lose faith. I want you to remember this prophecy. God is coming back for you in the midst of it. This is food for you. Because you can't live by bread alone. You need every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yes, you can believe in this word. Yes, you can believe in this truth. Yes, you can believe in your God. If he says it, it's going to happen. He doesn't change. Thank God for being faithful. Thank you, Jesus. He doesn't change. Thank God for being faithful. Imagine if every person in the world had disappointed you kept their word. Imagine if every person in your life was faithful. God leaves this flaw in humans. So that he stands out supreme because he's the only one that's faithful. You can believe what he says. What did he say? Do you know the prophecies of God? Do you know the promises of God? 
Do you know what specific promises in the Bible that are specifically for you? Has God ever given you a personal prophecy? Has your spiritual leader ever given you a prophetic word? That's where your hope lies. Your faith is based on you hearing that word and pattering your life, pattering your life, setting up your life based on that prophecy. If God is coming back for you, you have to pattern your life accordingly. You got to get ready. He which testified these things said, surely God is saying out of his mouth, surely, I promise you, I swear, I come quickly. Amen. That's it. Nothing else to talk about. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Pattern your life around that. Set your life up knowing that God is coming quickly. The Bible says in red letter in your Bible, God said I'm coming back quickly. And if God is going to bless you, if God is going to heal you, if God is going to move a major obstacle in your life, you got to pattern your life around that because God doesn't change. Does God change his mind? Why was God sorry that he made man? The Bible says, and God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made man on earth and it grieved him at his heart. The Bible says he repented that he made man, but Jesus is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. What? He created a solution for man's sin problem before man sinned. He created a solution before there was even a man. Is that prophecy? That's the ultimate prophecy. Did God create a provision for you to be saved before you needed to be saved? So yeah, he's sorry. He regrets that your behavior caused you to need to be saved. He regrets that, look, why did you have to go through what you had to go through to get here? Did God change his mind about Nineveh, which is modern day Iraq today? God said Jonah to prophesy, God will kill all y'all if you don't repent. They repented and God stayed his hand. Did he change? They went back into their wickedness and God ended up destroying them in 612 BC. Did he change? The prophecy says, if you stop your wickedness, you changed and God remained faithful. God kept his word like he always does. God may move. He may operate differently. But his nature or his word, his prophecy won't change. That's why Malachi 3 and 6 is very important. This is the most important scripture for a covenant servant. It says, for I am the Lord. I change not. And listen to this part. People most times stop there. Mm -hmm. What do you say next? That's the reason you sons of Jacob are not consumed. The, the, the fact that you have not been wiped out is because I don't change. I'm going to keep my promise. I made a promise with Abraham. I cannot wipe y'all out. I have to come back for y'all. Even if I don't feel like it. Even if y'all keep acting up, I'll just reprove you and get you right. Let me paraphrase it. Let me put it in my words. Since I, the Lord, do not go back on my promises, you Israelites have not been destroyed. That's what that means. Thank you, Jesus. That makes me happy. Yeah, it looks bad now. But hold on a little while longer, saints. God is coming back for you. That's your promise. That's your hope. Pattern your life around that. He's coming back for you. So you got to make some changes. I wish I would say that to yourself. Say it to yourself. God, don't, don't say it to yourself. God is coming back for me. Say it to you, believe it. God is coming back for me. Now get ready. But I ain't got no seeds in my barn. Get ready. Ain't no figs on the tree. God said, get ready. Only if you believe what I'm saying this day. This day, start saying, God is going to bless me. It says that. He said that. I From this day, that's what the prophecy says. From this day, from today. What is today's day? From October 7th, I'm telling you, a prophecy from the Lord God is telling you that is listening to me under the sound of my voice, from this day, God is going to bless you and then he's going to come back for you. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yeah, as the, as the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree has not brought forth. But from this day, will I bless you? Just like you believe in that seed that you planted. Imagine planting a seed. You plant it and you water it. You're not worried it's an apple going to come out of here. You put an apple seed in there. You are confident that that is going to turn into an apple tree. Just like you believe in that seed you planted. There's not a single grape 
or a fig on that tree yet, even though the tree has sprung up. The tree sprung up, but there's no fruit on it yet. But you believe one day there soon will be. You planted, you watered, you cultivated, you believe in your seed. God said, believe in him. He's coming back for you. The same faith you have in that, God wants you to have the same faith in him. Get ready. Don't wait till the harvest. Don't wait till the reapers are here. Do you have enough baskets for the figs? If you planted a fig tree, how are you going to gather them? If you really believe that tree is going to produce some figs, you need something to put the figs in, right? You need containers ready for the olive oil. What are you going to put the oil in? You got to get ready today. God promised to bless you. Praise him. God promised to come back for you. We ought to praise him just for that. Thank you all for coming today. If the police called you in the middle of the night and told you, man, get out the house and hung up, would you stay in the house? If you believed you would do something, even though you don't know what it is or what to do, if you believe that, you would make a different choice. You would do something different. Your behavior would change. There would be an action. And God is telling you the same thing today. God says, I don't care that you're not perfect yet. God said, move from this place where you are. Don't be here this time next year. God is coming back for you. Pattern your life around that so that when he returns, there will be figs on your tree. No, no, Lord, there, there, there are no seeds in my barn. With your help, I planted them all, but, but none of them has grown or even began to sprout yet. But you believe the apple seed. I, I believe it. I believe one day it's going to be an apple tree. I believe, God, that you will come back for me, even though I can't see any physical proof of that. Prepare me, God. And make me ready for your return, Jesus. Work on me, God. And send your word, Lord, so that I'll be better, Jesus. Now, I want the saints of God. I want you to know that the date is already set that the Lord will bless you. And God is running and chasing after you because he loves you more than you can imagine. God will leave the 99 and come just for you. This is the kind of God we serve. Oh,